Well, as a uh, professor, uh, associate professor of, of history, uh, the classes I teach at EKU that incorporate Native American history uh, are, in, in essence, pretty much all of them. Uh, you know, I teach uh, a variety of, of general education survey classes, and so I'm always seeking to, to show the ways in which Native American uh, history and Native American experiences are an integral part of American history. Uh, but in terms of upper division classes, uh, I have two different survey classes to, to encompass the, uh, the, the comprehensive uh, Native American experience in the Americas, looking from pre-contact uh, up through uh, the 1800s and the first half of that survey, then the second half of the survey going from the early 1800s all the way up to the present, uh, to the extent that we can get all that into the class. Uh, during my time here, this is my ninth year now at, at EKU, I've also taught a, a number of graduate seminars uh, that deal with various aspects of Native American history. In some, ca uh, some cases I have focused on a region, so I've taught uh, southeastern Native American history. Uh, other times more of a kind of chronological theme, uh, looking at 20th century Native American history. Um, uh, especially, you know, the, the 20th century Native American history uh, classes is one that uh, I think for graduate students was particularly helpful uh, simply because so much of Native American history uh, that, that people think about is, uh, is really um, the, the, the more distant past, 1700s, 1800s, things of that nature as opposed to, to the 20th century. Well, I think one of, uh, in terms of misconceptions or misperceptions, you know, uh, really uh, about Native Americans as peoples, as tribes, as communities, uh, in part plays into uh, what I was just talking about in, in terms of the, uh, the class on the 20th century, because I think one of the most common misconceptions uh, is simply the fact that Native Americans are a people of the past, uh, that Native Americans are not really um, a people of, of the present. Um, and so there is, you know, even, you know, as recently as last week, you know, having students in class, you know, automatically equate Indians and teepees, you know, because those are, you know, this, this notion that that's, that's what defines uh, what Indians are and not, not kind of really thinking about or, or understanding the ways in which in the present day there are, you know, 530, 500, 540 federally recognized tribes uh, and nations within just the United States and not even to take into account you know, the First Nations of Canada and things and, and, and thinking about present day lives, contemporary lives of Native American people. So I think that's one of the most, one of the most common. Now I think tied into that uh, is also uh, the notion of, of kind of generic Indianness, uh, the, this notion that Indians are Indians as if it's just one common category. Uh, and so uh, uh, not understanding or recognizing the very diversity of native peoples uh, and recognizing that you have, um, you know, within those federally recognized tribes, there are Shawnees. There's three different federally recognized Shawnee tribes. There's, uh, you know, Delaware's, Lenape's, there's Cheyenne, there's uh, Arapaho. Uh, Chumash, there's, there's so many Native American peoples and communities that there is no one Indian, you know, uh, identity. There is no one Indian people. There is no one Native American grouping. You know, someone, you know, joking around says, my Indian name is. That's, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it doesn't make sense, uh, especially because there are different tribes have different languages, right? It's, it's, I think the, the, the notion or, the, or the, the, uh, the idea that people don't recognize the, the very diversity of Native American peoples and experiences, I think that's one of the, the other issues. Um, and there's a whole lot we could kind of go off in that, that direction, but I think the two, two most common misperceptions then are uh, this notion that Indians are people of the past, uh, and number two, that, 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 that Indians are, are kind of one generic grouping as opposed to really seeing the, the very diversity of that experience in, in the communities.
Uh, yes, which is uh, one of the things that, that kind of why I feel so passionately about, about some of this, uh, you know, the, these ideas, especially contemporary lives. I've, I've been very fortunate uh, in the past, well, I mean, since I, since I got my PhD, um, you know, to, to be involved in things I don't think I had really considered to be possible. Um, so that, um, you know, I referenced the Shawnees. Uh, you know, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm working on a project with the Eastern Shawnee tribe who are uh, based currently in uh, northeastern Oklahoma in Ottawa County. Uh, and they are in the process of, in essence, recovering uh, the, the, their documentary history. Um, they are working with a, uh, a federal government grant that they obtained to travel all over the United States and to find records related to their to their people, related to their history, because uh, in the experience of the Eastern Shawnee from the late 1800s through the early 1900s, um, you know the the pressure of of the U.S. government of American expansion just really um, broke apart and divided their uh, their community and and broke up their land base in such a way that that in the present they're trying to put all that together. So I've had the opportunity to work with them uh, to travel uh, to archives, to, um, to work with members of the, of the, of the tribe, including the, the chief of the tribe, to, to try and find, uh, find out what happened in, in some of these years, to, to piece together their past. To, so to use my um, experience and, and skills as a, as a historian in times in the archives to really you know, assist them um, with, with the work that they're doing. Um, and, and that's really made me aware of a lot of what they themselves are, are, are you know, thinking about their life in the present, what they want to do, uh, and, and where they see themselves having been. So connection to their history and their, their present. Um, I've also had the opportunity to work with a number of different tribes and uh, present-day litigation, um, you know, issues that they're resolving through the legal system, where my knowledge of treaties of the 1800s um, is uh, ends up being, you know, relatively critical for what they're able to talk about in terms of their own tribal sovereignty in the present. Um, and so, my my historical knowledge and expertise has been, you know. Uh, Brought to brought uh, to use in in the court system, which has been just an, an incredible experience. Um, and outside of that, just a, a variety of things here here and there. Working through the Ohio, what was the Ohio Historical Society and is now the Ohio History Connection, um, where they're you know putting together uh, various uh, exhibits and things, and working with tribal members um, and tribal communities out in Oklahoma. Um, and so I've been brought into those discussions. So I've had the, the good fortune of, of, of getting to know and work with a number of different uh, contemporary tribal communities in a way that, that has uh, made me a better historian and, and certainly made me much more aware of contemporary Native communities and, and issues. This is something that, that I'm very excited about, the, the, the notion that um, within, hopefully within a year, uh, starting fall of 2016, that in fact uh, EKU will have um, a Native American Studies minor that we can offer students. Now one of the, the, the best parts about this in many ways is the fact that at, at its uh, uh, beginnings, this minor will essentially just gather together classes that are already in place. It's this notion that, that already EKU you know, had these classes, that, that these classes were being taught in various departments. Um, and it's essentially taken uh, just a, a, a small group of people for us to sit down and, and say we, we want to put together a program that would expose students to these issues. And really what that's just going to mean is, is coordinating what so many people are already doing on this campus and putting to them together in a framework that will allow students to take anthropology classes, take history classes, take art classes, um, a gov you know, government classes, philosophy, all that together can, can provide students with a very comprehensive um, perspective on Native American issues, Native American studies, the histories, 
and cultures, um, you know, uh, from the past to, to the present. Um, it will be like, you know, uh, any other minor at, at EKU. Uh, it's, I think it's currently slated it would be about 18 hours of study and something that we, you know, uh, think will be very um, uh, accessible to students and, and will really provide the opportunity for students to, to flesh out their, uh, their academic coursework and, and just their, their whole educational experience in a way that um, they may not have considered before. I think students will benefit from such a minor um, and from the opportunities that such a minor present um, in a couple of different ways. I think one of the, the biggest thing is, is there's a great deal of interest on this campus. I, I think it's, it's something that's certainly reflected in uh, the nation overall, um, but, but certainly within this campus, based on my experience with the classes I teach, um, with the Chautauqua Lecture Series, where every November we've, uh, we've had uh, uh, a, a keynote address for Native American Heritage Month, you know, ways in which we can get a, a sense, engage what, what students are interested in, that there is a tremendous level of interest in Native American cultures and Native American histories. Um, and yet, one of the things is, is with that, you know, there is that, that interest, but there's also you know, people coming with that interest who don't necessarily have the, the grounding in, in, in that larger foundation of, of Native American studies. And so I think what, what this minor will do is it will provide a, a, a wonderful convergence of that level of interest with uh, the, uh, the, the academic side, the, the, the classrooms, the, the discussions, the readings that will allow those people to, to fulfill that interest even as they learn to expand their understanding of issues of experience. You know, people who have certain, you know, what we uh, talked about before about misconceptions or mis, uh, misperceptions of Native American histories or communities, um, the minor will, will truly provide that kind of convergence of ideas. It, um, and it also, I think, is, is one of those things where it's providing students an opportunity that, that they, they may not, and, and certainly within Kentucky, won't get at other places. As we were putting together this minor, one of the things that we found is within the state of Kentucky, only Northern Kentucky University has a minor, has anything along these lines in Native American studies. Um, and so EKU you know, has the opportunity to provide students with a, a program, um, you know, with a minor that, that they, they would not be able to, to obtain elsewhere. Uh, it is something that, that I'm certainly passionate about, it's a subject, a topic, uh, and I also think that it's something that will very much fulfill um, you know, a need here uh, not just at EKU, but in Kentucky in general, with that larger understanding of, of Native American experiences and, and histories and contemporary lives and, and issues, which you know, I think for you know, when we talk about diversity and when we, when we talk about um, you know, students growing and critical thinking and everything during their years as an undergraduate, you know, I think this, this minor um, and, and the topics that it will present fits into that perfectly.